Hi, I'm Roy Collin, and welcome to the show. I've got six podcasts, as you'll see behind me. The Speaking Podcast, where I'm talking to speakers, coaches, authors, and even marketers. I've got the Meditation Podcast, where I'm talking about meditation, breath work, yoga, chakras. I've got a load of meditations from one minute to two hours. I've got the Learn Polish Podcast, and the episodes are about five to ten minutes, and we deal with everyday topics like going to the dentist and things like that. The Awakening Podcast is where I'm exposing fraud and corruption, but with solutions. And I've had guests like Mickey Willis, Dr. Peter McCullough, David Icke, and Thomas Rents. The Crypto Podcast is where I'm exposing fraud and corruption in the crypto blockchain technology. So about cryptos and NFTs, but also on the good things and how to invest safely. And finally, the Podfather, which you see there on my uh, t-shirt, the podfather.me, is where I'm helping podcasters either to start a podcast or existing podcasters how to grow their audience. And most of the episodes are short, but they're uh, good tips that will help you improve your show. I also have a store on all of my podcasts, so you can go in. There's, there's some of my products and also some of the affiliates that I do, and that helps me with the show. You'll find everything on bio.link forward slash podcaster. And I'm also helping people start the podcast as well as doing a podcast tour. So you'll find everything on the link there. I'd like to thank my sponsor, danielpacker.com. He's helping people with fear, doubt, and anxiety. He's got a 90% success rate, and you only pay if he helps you. So be sure to check him out, danielpacker.com. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to comment on the social media and let us know what you think. You don't always have to agree, but as long as it's not abusive, the comment will stay up. Welcome to the Speaking Podcast. You can find all our episodes on speakingpodcast.com. My guest today from Chicago in the USA, keynote speaker, holds a master's in finance and economics from Northwestern University, small business advocate, seminar leader of values development. He is the founder of Get Looped. Please welcome Chris Latin Slagov. Did, did, did I butcher it yes. or was it okay? Very good, Roy. No, that was fantastic. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Ten brownie <Morning>. points. <laughs> it's so, a pleasure to be here. No, thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to this. So, I mean, like you've got a lot of business experience and everything, but you might just kind of give us your business journey and let us know a bit more about Chris. Sure. So, um, I've come. I've come full circle in regards to my perspective of business. So I grew up in a family that was a, a, a small family business household. My father owned a construction company, a paving company. Uh, and that was our that was our life. The whole family was in, you know, if, if anyone out there in your audience is involved with a family business, they know that everyone's involved. Um, the moment that uh, that you can help out with uh, with the family business, you're there. So I grew up with that and fully expected that I'd be involved in the family business for my entire life. Um, unfortunately, uh, during the one of the major recessions here in the United States, it was 1978, and there was a, an oil embargo going on, and uh, the construction industry was shuttered, and my father wasn't prepared. Um, so... Uh, he was forced to declare bankruptcy in it. And then because he wasn't emotionally prepared either, Roy, he had a heart attack and, and he passed away at 48. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of lessons that I want to just start out for all of you business owners that are out there and you think that nothing bad can ever happen to you. Well, actually, I don't know a small business owner that doesn't always worry, <laughs> but they don't always prepare. All right. So think about your family, think about those you love and take the steps to make sure that they're always protected because you might not be there to be able to protect them. And you want, if you care for the ones that you love, take care of them when you're away, not just when you're there. So that's a little bit of advice from, from my personal background. Cause my mom was in a super hard spot and um, I stopped going to school. I went, you know, I, I stayed and, and helped her through that transition uh, but it was hard. It was it was super hard. Um, and and, you know, once she was 
established once essentially we you know we sold off any assets that we had uh, we took care of the bankrupt business um i got her settled in and um then i finished school and went on to have my own career and at that point in time roy the the concept was you get the best education you can you work for the biggest and best company that you can and you accumulate as much stuff as possible uh in in uh in your striving to have the good life hold it life hasn't changed that much has it that still sounds rather familiar and um what i found through all the through all the striving is that i missed a lot of the joy associated with living and I guess that's really the full circle that I've come at. Once I retired from Wall Street, I got my MBA at Northwestern and went to Wall Street and worked for some of the largest, most prestigious firms in the world and uh, and did well um, and then retired. And then the pandemic came and I saw all of these small businesses being shuttered. And I knew what that meant. I knew that a lot of dreams and a lot of, um, savings and a lot of commitment and a lot of families were going to be damaged. Uh, and it broke my heart seeing how they were being sacrificed at the altar of big business because I noticed that Home Depot and uh, Amazon and a lot of other businesses didn't have to close, but all these small businesses did. Uh, so I still don't hear any real advocacy in support of small businesses. So I've decided to take that upon myself, to take that banner of supporting small businesses, of recognizing that small businesses still are the backbone of our nation, that um, they are the foundation of our neighborhoods, of our communities, and that if we don't support them as consumers, in other words, our economic purchases actually make a difference, then imagine a world without them. Uh, and I don't think any of us want to live in a world in which uh, we walk down streets and they're all shuttered, in which we walk into organizations or businesses and they don't know who we are or care who we are. Uh, I love the idea uh, and experiences of working with small businesses mm -hmm. in which they know their customer, in which they respect their customer, in which they care about their customer. So that's what I've done. I've come out of retirement and moved back to Chicago and have taken up the banner under Get Looped to be an advocate for small businesses. I think it's important for all of us to be aware of their commitment to us because they actually care. And what I found with very large organizations, and I've worked for them, I'm not saying that uh, they're not they're not useful to get experience, they're not useful to pay your bills. They're just... Um, not committed to the individuals that uh, they serve and that serve them. With kind of your background in trading, I mean, I'm not sure if you were kind of still working there with the, during the kind of 2008 with the financial crisis, but it took a bit longer to come across the pond. And I had, I was the president of a lot of companies in Poland. I was doing well myself, but all the syndicates that I was in, they got lost everything. And I saw the amount of corruption, like even banks, they were like, you know, throwing money at one stage. And then all my interest only became repayments. So like they intentionally made you fail. And not only that, but you had all of these bailiffs or like the syndicates that came in with one big commercial property. They said to all the tenants, don't pay us. They didn't pay the electricity and the water. So all the tenants left. And then you had people coming in, robbing the copper and everything. And then they valued the, the property at less than half. So when it went to auction, they would have been buying it at 20, 15%. And I thought we had another one. They bribed the people in the room, the bailiffs. So my mission was to start exposing this because you would have seen how many people throwing the towel. And even with the last few years with the, I call it pandemic, how many people got just shut down, whereas the likes of Amazon and all the big boys got massive. And I know that with the property thing, the traders, they were buying stuff on 6% on the dollar because in the books, it didn't look right. 
yet they wouldn't sell it to the person because they could have organized 6% of the value of their property. So then it goes to court that they're caught for all the legal fees, interest, penalties, and the whole amount. It's been insured. There's so much fraud going on, but it's the small boys that are getting caught the whole time. It's unfortunate. And I think 2008 really changed the culture of of business in the United States and in the relation to government. Um, so many people saw the corruption. So many people saw how the, the, the cards were stacked against the individuals, against the small family, against the taxpayers, and really um, uh, the people that gained were the ones with the special interest, the ones that could pay the contributions, the ones that could uh, feed the politicians. And, you know, there's a revolution going on um, in government after government after government after government in which uh, the traditional vested interests are being uh, are being rejected uh, because the voters don't believe that they have uh, the voters interests at heart. And I'm sorry to say they're right. So the best way that we as individuals can impact the system is with our purchasing dollars. We still have the ability to be able to buy uh, the products that we want to buy, to be able to um, create the products that we want to sell outside of the traditional large organizations. And that's where um, I believe that, you know, I'm not one for for arguing for government overthrow or unrest. I, I believe that we need an infrastructure and a government. We need, um, you know, we need the, we need the police. I don't believe in defunding the police. We need uh, uh, the infrastructures of society. We just need to recognize though that um, politicians are uh, bought and sold and that uh, we need to support each other. And the best way to do that is economically. I'm a cap. I, I'm still a capitalist. I believe in capitalism. It's the best system out there. You know, there are people that are um, arguing for socialism, and and you know, do I believe that we need a safety net? Of course. Do I believe that we need to care for those that can't care for themselves? Absolutely. Do I believe that we need to provide incentives for people to work? I do. Um, you know, these are all common sense. Conversa conversations that I think if you have with 95% of the people out there, they'll agree with the, the, the basic principles of loving your brother and sister, uh, particularly those that can't take care of themselves. Um, but there are so many common sense solutions that aren't being implemented because there are vested interests that profit off of failed principles. Um, so I rather than, you know, there are activists that are out there. There are people that get involved in politics. Um, I'd much rather be involved in helping my neighbors, helping my family, helping my communities. That's why I like to focus on small businesses um, because they can make decisions for themselves. When a company is public, it is, um, it is owned by shareholders and shareholders can be activists. Subsequently, there's not as much that can be done in that environment. So I work with private companies. I think we're going to actually see a, a, a significant shift into the privatization of organizations and into the creation of small businesses. You know, with uh, the disruptions that occurred with the supply chains uh, during the pandemic, I think that the concept of globalization has been uh, uh, has been identified as flawed on, on many different levels. Uh, offshoring is a failed policy. I think we're going to see a lot of localization in regards to manufacturing um, and local purchase and local purchasing and, and everything from food, local purchasing and creation, everything from food to goods and services. And being here in the United States, uh, actually, Poland's a really great capitalist country also. But being here in the United States, I, I believe that there's still a, a fundamental capitalist um, and can-do spirit that will prevail. I'm an optimist. I, you know, this country's been around for over 200 and 
some years and almost 50 years. And I believe and, ho and I'm hopeful that it'll be around for another 250 more. And with the, like the small companies that you're helping then, is it, it's just more kind of advice that you're doing? Or are you come, kind of coming in doing financial stuff as well, helping them with the investments? So I do, I, I help people with, with managing their ability to grow their company. You know, it's, there are organizations that provide financing. There are organizations that provide training. I actually help small business owners that are, that struggle personally. So I know what it's like to have um, difficulties in life. I, I've had um, so many personal tragedies, everything from uh, my father's early death to my mom having a, a stroke and needing needing medical care for 10 years and going bankrupt, uh, from my older brother being murdered, my younger brother committing suicide, my sister dying from cirrhosis, and my own series of experiences with drug and alcohol abuse. So there's a lot of hardship in all of those things. And what I found with small business owners is particularly ones that have had a successful business for a period of time is that they get distracted um, and they get into shenanigans and uh, they generally are in a situation where they need help, uh, but they don't know where to turn. So I like to work with uh, small business owners that are struggling with some of the personal challenges that they've often created themselves and need someone to talk with about it because they have no one to talk with. Uh, they can't talk with their partner. They can't talk to their children. They can't talk to their friends, their neighbors, because often there's a level of shame associated with much of their behavior also. Um, I'm not about the shame. I'm about the solution. Let's get your life back on track. And that's where I have a lot of success with people. And is there a certain level that you kind of work with that they have to be doing like a turnover of a million plus or something or in certain sectors or is it kind of open to all small business? So I'm, I want to help the human condition. Um, most of the people that hire me, I'm not cheap. Um, most of the people that hire me are, are, are generating at least a million dollars in revenue. Um, they've had their business for a while. The issue, Roy, with today's world is that th things are so expensive. A million dollars a year doesn't go very far, particularly when you have a couple kids that want to go to college. You're too rich to qualify for aid, but you're not rich enough where it doesn't hurt. Believe me, I know what that's like. Each of my kids was a quarter million dollars after tax out of my pocket um, to go to university. And uh, that's not cheap. Uh, then you have all the living expenses and the operating expenses of your business. Uh, so it's, you know, you generally have to have some level of success. And what occurs when people have been distracted from their business is what generally wakes them up is either a crisis in their personal life, they get caught and they're given an ultimatum or a crisis in their business because they've been distracted and haven't been focusing on their business. They lose their largest client or um, some piece of equipment that's super expensive and key to their operations breaks down or a relationship in their supply chain disappears. It's usually some type of crisis that precipitates them saying, holy cow. They look around their lives and they're like, oh my God, it's all at risk. Um, and that's when I generally get a call from them and say, can you help me? Uh, and it's not pretty. Um, usually it's, it's, you know, small business owners, particularly successful ones have an ego. Uh, they've been successful for a period of time and they don't like asking for help. And they're most certainly don't like sharing some things that they're not proud of. So once we get past the reality of where their situation is and that they realize that I'm actually not there to judge them, <laughs> who am I to judge is actually the best defense that I have in being able to help them break down their fences is I've been in their shoes. Um, 
and I've I've made and lost several fortunes. And generally, it's always because of my own behavior and my own ego. Um, the great news is, is that once small business owners are so talented, if you've had success in your business before, you have the ability to have success again. You um, can remake your life. Uh, it, it's a little it's a little messy for a period of time, but it's okay. That's part of growing of your personal growing experience. You kind of made your bed and you're going to sleep in it for a while, but that's all right. You're going to be a different person and hopefully a better person afterwards. And with people that are going through, like say they've lost their key uh, client or they're going through some sort of problem that's happened like you mentioned the machine or something like that usually when that happens people turn off the marketing dollars and they go into you know defense mode but they don't hire people like yourself to come in even though you kind of see it from a kind of you know plan view and you can kind of put move the pieces around because they're so attached to it like how do you kind of get into the head of somebody that actually because there's a lot of people will never kind of hire you or somebody with similar experiences? How do you kind of, what's the best way to kind of let someone know this could be the best thing for you? I'm not selling. I'm here to help. And if you want my help, terrific. And if you don't, I wish you the very, very best. So I don't feel the, you know, again, I'm, I'm fortunate in regards to I've regained uh, much of the wealth that, that I've, I've lost before. Um, and I have the ability to be able to walk away. So when you don't feel the a, a sense of desperation of you need to get that next client, it's really easy to have a calm conversation say, I really do want to help you. I really can help you. Do you want to help yourself? Um, and usually uh, there's an ultimatum involved uh, from either a business partner or uh, a spouse um, or, or a, a live-in partner. And um, it forces them to, to take a look at their lives. Um, nobody likes to reorganize their stuff. Um, and, but that's actually one of the great things about business owners is, is they can get past the emotional. You know, They can uh, look at things in a manner that says, what do I need to do to survive? Um, how do I reinvent myself they're incredible small business owners are incredibly durable they're incredibly um innovative um and they're survivors they've learned how to survive over the years you know that's one of the things of uh, i people that have worked for corporations throughout their entire lives. And I've been that person for a period of time. Again, I went through the, you know, the school systems and worked for large global organizations and worked my way up and um, uh, went through that route. It's a very different skill set than running your own business. And people that run their own business are survivors um, because there's no, there's no plan B, so to speak. It's, you got to make this happen. And, um, so when when push comes to shove and their back is against the door, they're willing to do what it takes to um, to get through whatever jam they're in. And which kind of claims that you kind of work? What, what do you see is the common mistake people are making? Well, the common, mis you know, it's usually. It's usually sex or drugs. Those are the sex, drugs, alcohol. Those are those are the human those are the human tragedies. Um, and for, and people are like, well, what's the cure for that? Well, <laughs> it usually begins with stop it. <laughs> but then it also starts to, um, you know, identifying what you want. What are your priorities? Is your partnership with your, with your spouse, um, with your children is is that really valuable to you? What's it going to take to to maintain that five years, 10 years, 15 years in the future? Um, again, hard lessons that I had to learn because I lost the relationship with my children 
for an extended period of time. And um, it's a, it's a, it's a heartbreaking, it's a heartbreaking experience. I don't want anybody to ever have to ex go through that experience. Um, so regaining that trust, investing in your legacy with your family is just so super valuable. Um, so we usually start with identifying what's important to you and then how do we keep what's important to you? Um, do you touch on, you know, like sometimes like you were a part of uh, your, your father's business and, you know, you were learning from him and, you know, obviously, you know, unexpectedly what happened, but do you deal with people that are bringing their family in and preparing them for kind of taking over or if something goes wrong, do you go, go to that depth? If they want, I generally deal with the entrepreneur. Okay. I'm not a family counselor. Um, I, I don't want to be a family counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm here to help you reorganize and fix your business. Okay. Um, that generally starts with, with helping you stop your bad behavior. Um, and then identifying what your goals are and then creating a pathway of what steps are we going to do over the next eight to 12 weeks to get you from A to B. I'm very logical um, in helping you be able to create a plan. And most importantly, to helping you be able to execute your plan, like any coach. And I use sports analogies all the time. If you want to be world class, you're not doing it by yourself. Um, it's super hard to, to get the level of training, discipline, goal setting, fulfillment on your own. So you hire someone that can hold you accountable. You know, it's not that hard to be able to say, I need to do this, 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 and this to do the analysis of how to improve your life. What's hard is the consistency of execution. And that's really where I help people. And, you know, like what I've noticed with a lot of entrepreneurs is the ego gets in the way. So you might be bringing the best advice that you know will help. And then they have their own kind of thought process and they kind of fight it. Well, how do you overcome that? Well, by the time they come to me, they're pretty humbled. <laughs> It's one thing when you're making a lot of money and you're king of the world. It's really easy to, to, to feel like you're special. It's a whole nother thing when your partner's telling you, you either get your stuff together or you're out or your partner or you're, or you're being sued and you're feeling like you're up against the wall. Um, and, and that's a lonely spot too. So having someone that you can talk with is just so important. Being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, I think is one of the loneliest positions that you have because particularly when you're struggling, okay? Nobody likes to talk with other people, particularly people that know them about their struggles, okay? You might be fortunate and have a special friend that you grew up with or that um, you have a confidence with, but most people don't. Um, and most people like the fact that I can relate to most of their challenges um, and also be able to talk to them professionally because uh, I have, uh, I, I've run my own business. I've taken a small business public. So I, I've gone from running a small organization and taking it public on NASDAQ and I've worked for large corporations. So I know what, what best practices are. Um, I've gotten some of the best business education in the world, and I know what it's also like to struggle um, and to survive and come out on the other side. You see, one of the great things that I believe that I can offer people is hope and an example of what life looks like when you survive, um, because it can be awful dark for a period of time, particularly when most likely it's not just your business that, that's, that's struggling. It's not just your relationship. Your health is probably a little crappy too. Um, you don't feel good about yourself. It's, 
It's a step-by-step -step process and doing it with someone who has had success in turning themselves around, you know, just view it as a, as a turnaround job instead of a business though, you're the business. And, um, where would you rather invest? Imagine if you could one year from now, imagine sitting down and going through the exercise of what would you like your life to look like one year from now? It's, dark right now. There's this, 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 and this that's interfering with your life. And these are real challenges. Okay. The, this is immediacy. We identify that. And then we also identify where would you like to be a year from now? Realistically. And when I say realistically, I mean, I set very high goals and standards. Um, where do you want to be and what's it going to take to get there? And then let's, let's make that happen. Um, and I hold you accountable. It's not always, it's not always pleasant. People don't like to be held accountable, um, but they actually do uh, because they like the results. And I know when I went through that process, when I was held accountable by someone who I respected, by someone who had shown, who had gone, walked the walk that I had walked um, or wanted to, uh, it made all the difference in the world to have someone to go to when I felt like I was struggling, failing, or succeeding and achieving goals. It's nice to be able to share successes with someone that understands the work that I did to be able to get through all that. And like when you're going to, I mean, I've had about 20 different companies and so, you know, sold someone you know, some just ran the course and, but I kind of surround myself with all entrepreneurs. So I've seen and heard all different things. And um, what I kind of have noticed. And it's seen, amazing. It's amazing what people end up, what happens with people's lives. Doesn't it? It's because uh, most, I, most entrepreneurs are so talented. They're doing well. The only thing that interferes with their success is themselves. Definitely. So, this is one that people, when whether it's a relationship, what whatever has happened that's kind of got them to kind of get get help, they've lost their mojo. Their productivity is down. You know, they probably don't even feel like getting out of bed. I know that's happened to me at, at, at one stage. <laughs> it's like you just kind of, you know, when you see your accountant minus the millions, you go, "Holy shit, how did this happen?" <laughs> so, how like even though you'd want to be the agony end, but if you're dealing with the entrepreneur, what, like, have you a strategy? Because there's, there's millions of people currently going through that. Like, what have you a way of helping people overcome that? You know, you, first step, stop the pain. Second step, start healing yourself, whatever you can do. I mean, literally, I know what it's like to not want to get out of bed. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to get out of bed and this is what we're going to do. And, and can you do this? Can you commit to doing these three steps? Okay. And then you build from that. It it's, there's no magic here, Roy. There's no, there's no, there's no, um, um, you know, voodoo associated with this. It takes work. Um, I'm not going to, I'm, and that's the other thing is I don't lie to you. I don't sugarcoat it. It's going to take some work and there's going to be some difficulty and not everything's going to work out all the time. But, you know, I know people that have given up and they think nobody cares because um, they're because they caused pain or they did something bad, quote, bad, or um, they don't feel worthy. And they hurt themselves. Um, there is not a single person who has done that who hasn't hurt others in the process. We're all cared for. There are those that are always impacted by the choices and actions that we make. And I have personally been in some incredibly dark spaces. You know, drug addictions, you know, I was a meth addict. Drug addiction is not a funny, is not a fun thing. Um, it and recovery is a challenging thing. 
but I am the poster child in many respects of being able to survive and come through the other side and have literally an extraordinary second, third act. Um, life, and not, I mean, I'm 66 years old and I'm going through some of the best periods of my life ever. And I've had extraordinary periods in my life. Um, so it's never too late. It's never too late. Don't give up. There are those that love you. And there are those that will love you. Let's become lovable. Right now, some people aren't. Or at least they don't feel that they are. It's. I promise you, we can change that. Very good. And which kind of employees then do you touch on that? Because some people, they need to caught a few of them and they've built up relationships when they couldn't maybe like some people become buddies with all their workers and others kind of keep the distance but when you're going through restructuring or just kind of get everything right sometimes you like as you're building a company the employees don't grow at the level they should and you need to be bringing in higher you know better class of people is that something you go through as well with, with because i think there's something an external your, there person are definitely some that. people there are generally people in your life that are toxic, um, that don't want you to succeed, that keep them company at the bottom. Um, and we're going to, you know, we're going to look at who's, who's helping, who's hurting. And, and I'm going to try and help you be able to make the choices that need to be made in regards to surrounding yourself with winners. We are who we associate with. You know, the old saying, you know, show me your five, the five people that you spend most of the time with, and I'll show you who you are. It's true. So let's surround you with winners. And for some people, you know, they need to deal with their drug and alcohol addiction. That's finding people who are sober and are winners. Um, and not just, this is going to get me in trouble in the recovery community, but it helps to be surrounded by, if you're an entrepreneur and a small business owner, it helps to be in meetings that are filled with entrepreneurs and small business owners, okay? They know where you're going through and there are those meetings, okay? You search them out. Now, don't get me wrong. Every meeting that I've been to has a positive experience. But when you surround yourself with winners that know your world and can help you, it makes all the difference in the world. So we're going to surround you with winners and we're going to surround you with a philosophy and actions that bring you back to your life yeah. and your life back to you. We can create any life that, no, actually, we do create the life that we live and we can create the life that we want. It's just a fact. You're not where you're at by accident. You're where you're at because of your actions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Super simple. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. <laughs> so your, your book, basically, obviously not everybody, a, uh, can afford but yet go to yeah the prosperity loop so is it what we're discussing here that you put on paper to kind of cover to help the other people or what exactly uh is is in your book so the prosperity loop was my first attempt at um at starting to to talk about the ideas that we have here um i think there's some fundamental principles in the prosperity loop that are that are helpful for people um I don't think it is as strong a guideline as um, as having direct communication with another human being. Again, if it's not me, I understand. Find someone that you can talk with, okay? You can get a lot of knowledge from a book, but you cannot get comfort or relationship from a book, okay? Get help, whether it's... Um, you know, whether it's in recovery, whether it's with a therapist, whether it's with a coach, um, doing change alone is super hard. And 
you know, if you're in a difficult spot in your life, you're going to need change because, you know, it's the, it's the old saying that you, if you keep doing the same old, same old, you're going to get the same old, same old results. Um, so doing change by yourself is hard. Now, the prosperity loop, what I love about that book is it talks about some of the realities of sharing the success of your business. The whole concept of being a self-made millionaire is fallacy, okay? There's no such thing as a self-made millionaire. We all have help. So it's a matter of starting to recognize who you surround yourself with and how you reward them and partner with them to help create success for everyone, okay? I'm not a believer in the minimum wage. Who wants to be minimum anything, okay? I want you to believe that uh, and to fulfill helping other people's destinies is part of your own success. And so uh, the Prosperity Loop is about learning how to have communication and conversation instead of dictation. It's about learning how to um, reward others, not just yourself, okay? Don't view people as a cost. They're your most important asset. Yes, they're expensive. And yes, they're, you know, when you're a business owner, believe me, I understand completely that your costs are your biggest concern. Um, but if you view people as a cost center and treat them as a cost center, you will get the very least out of them, okay? You want to invest in their success because their success is your success. And then the last piece of advice that I have in the book that I think is so important is the concept of valuing your business. And not, you know, most people think of valuing their business of what's its net worth or what's it, how, you know, what's its income generation, um, et cetera, et cetera, the traditional financial metrics. I view values in your business as the moral character of your business, okay? Who, when you have a small business, who you hire is the most important decision you'll ever make. That person that you hire is not just the cost structure associated with that person or the of value that they bring, they are the heart and soul of your business. If you have a bad hire, that person can literally be poison to your organization. One bad hire in a small business can be devastating. Similarly, hiring someone that doesn't necessarily have the full skills, no, let me take that back. Hiring someone strictly for skills is a fool's game. Okay, you can teach skills, but you can't teach someone how to treat another human being with dignity. It's super hard. So having someone, having people on your team that have values, I think are is really an important lesson for small business owners. It's not just about their skills. Don't just look at their resume. Do the assessment tests. I think assessment tests are super helpful in this area of not just their skill sets, but of their value sets, okay? Because the culture that they participate in and they help create is what's going to drive success in your business. Yeah, excellent. And just finally, Chris, like you have webinars for mentorship. So you might just kind of explain exactly what, you know, you bring in a lot of people together or what's the purpose of that? So once a month, I like to do um, I like to do live webinars. It's the first Tuesday of every month, not this Tuesday. Uh, it's the only one. This it's this Wednesday coming up, and that's because I'm my girlfriend is um, launching her book, and I'm super proud of her, and I want to support her fully on the day that she launches her book. Um, so it'll be Wednesday the first. I'm going to be doing a webinar. I do it again, usually the first Tuesday of every month. And it's just a 30 minute webinar on topics associated with small business. I'd love to have you join. You can 
uh, go to www.get-loop.com uh, through my, either a Facebook page, my LinkedIn, uh, my LinkedIn page, or through my website, and come join for the webinar. It's literally a conversation. So I talk about um, this conversation. I believe this Wednesday we're going, or the first we're going to be talking about um, about sobriety and and helping you uh, uh, create value in your business and what you need to do to be able to have partnerships. So um, you're more than welcome to come. It's free. I I'm looking to build relationships. If I can be of value to you in any way possible, I am happy to. Excellent. Listen, totally enjoyed the call. I'll make sure I'll put all the links both on the audio and the video. Thank you very much, Chris. It was really great. Thank you so very much. Yeah. So that's all for the speaking podcast. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, five star rate, and share with your friends. And also comment on what we discussed. We'd like to know your thoughts. Until next week, take care. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. As mentioned at the start, you'll find my six podcasts on buyer.link forward slash podcaster. And also, if you'd like to start a podcast or do a podcasting tour, you'll find the information on that or on the QR code that's there. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, five star rating and share with your friends because it really helps. And also, I'd like to thank DanielPacker.com, helping people with fear, doubt, and anxiety. He's got a 90% success rate, and he's only charging if he helps you. So be sure to check him out, and you get a free call to discuss everything. Until next week, take care.